Hello everyone, today we are going to discuss about the partograph that what actually is partograph and how to plot it and how to interpret the findings of the partograph. Last video we had an official slides thi. those were um, given by the National Health Mission regarding the partograph the guidelines which the National Health Mission tells the government of India or the hospitals run by the government of India or any private sector also to follow while plotting the partograph so this is the actual partograph that we usually use in the labor room in our labor wards so here you can see that first of all is the identification data that we have to fill next is the charting of the fetal heart rate liker cervix descent of head contractions and the drugs that can be given in the during the active phase of labor along with charting the vital status of the mother this is the pulse bp temperature and the urine so we have to now see that how to fill this partograph or if we see any partograph that is filled then how to interpret the findings of the partograph so first of all let me give you all a brief idea about the partograph the partograph is used to assess the progress of labor the progress of labor can be assessed by assessing the partograph along with this we can also assess the condition of mother and fetus now when to start charting the partograph this is a very important point and you have to remember it because this was asked in msc nursing examination conducted by ames rishikesh that when we have to start charting the partograph so the answer would be we have to start charting the partograph in the first stage of labor when the cervical dilatation is more than or equal to 4 centimeters and from 4 centimeters till 10 centimeters we have to chart the partograph we have to maintain the data we have to maintain the findings from the cervical dilatation that is from 4 centimeters to 10 centimeters in this partograph only now we will learn that how to plot a partograph in this you have to remember few things first one is you have to count the fhr every 30 minutes as you can see in the partograph the first part is the identification data of the patient here you have to write the name of the patient for example if the name of the patient is radha so here you have to write radha then the gravida for example the gravida is 2 para i'm taking the example 2 sorry 1 1 will be written here because the second time is she is here in the hospital then after her delivery the parity will become 2 then hospital number whatever is the code of the hospital or the hospital number or you have or you can even write the name of the hospital for example aims date of admission today is 8th so we'll take the date as 8th june 2023 time of admission let me say it is 10 am and ruptured membranes when were the membranes ruptured if the membranes were not ruptured then you can write nil or if the membranes were ruptured then you can write the hours for example if the patient came here at 10 am we can assume uh, i'm taking just the example that the membranes got ruptured at 8 am so this you have to write here then the first part of plotting the partograph is FHR. So just now I have told you that we have to plot the FHR every 30 minutes. So you can see here clearly this is the area where you have to write the FHR. And the, the main FHR or the normal value that we assume for fetal heart rate is 100 to 180. So this is the range given here and you can plot it in these columns. For example, 
Now the FHR is 120. So I'll give a dot here at 120. And this we are starting at. We can write the time of starting the partograph. For example, we are starting at 12 p.m. So this will be at 12 p.m. Then simultaneously every 30 minutes you have to plot the FHR. This will be at 12.30. Then for example at 1 o'clock it is 1.10. So this is the way you have to plot the FHR in this partograph. And FHR has to be counted every 30 minutes. That is to be remembered. Now the next thing is you have to also count the uh, uterine contraction. The duration of the uterine contraction. So the next thing that you have to count is duration of uterine contraction. Then how do you know that the patient is or the fetus is in distress? So for example, if you are getting the FHR, this is your chart and if it is coming below 120, then the fetus will be considered in distress or if it is going above 160. If you see here clearly that there are two bold lines, one at 120 and one is at 160. So the range of normal is this 120 to 160 anything below 120 or above 160 will be considered as an abnormal finding and that you can keep it as or regard as fetal distress. Then we also have to record the status of membrane. The membrane status has also to be kept in mind that whether it is ruptured or not ruptured and we also have to check the amniotic fluid whether it is leaking or not leaking both these things are to be checked every half hourly that is in every 30 minutes then if the membranes are intact, if you see that the membranes are intact, then you have to write I. And if you see that the membranes are blood stained, then you can write B. If the membranes, oh, sorry, if the liquor, if the liquor is blood stained, you have to write B. And if the liquor is clear, then you can write C. And if the liquor is meconium stained, then you have to write M. And then how can you assess the color of the liquor? You have to give one sterile pad to the patient to check the condition of the liquor or the color of the liquor. You have to give one sterile pad to the patient to check the status of membrane and the color of liquor. Then we will learn about the next thing that is uh, this I told you that we have to start checking the uh, or plotting the partograph in the active phase of labor the first stage of labor labor when the cervical dilatation is more than four centimeters along with this also one point to be kept in mind is that there should be more than two contractions per per 10 minutes in every 10 minutes there should be more than two contractions so these are the two main conditions when you have to start plotting the partograph one is the cervical dilatation is more than four centimeters and the other one is that the number of contractions is more than two per 10 minutes then we have to plot the initial findings of the patient in the partograph so where you have to plot the initial findings the initial findings are to be plotted on this alert line. When you see, uh, you can see here, this is the cervix. You have to plot the dilatation in centimeters here. And then this is descent of head. 
here you have to write the station whether it is 0 1 this is the normal this will be considered as 0 then minus 1 minus 2 or plus 1 or plus 2 you have to plot the descent of the head here and plot the centimeters of cervix the dilatation here in this phase and whenever the findings cross the alert line this is the alert line when this crosses the alert line you have to immediately inform to the gynecologist that there may be something unusual or something abnormal and the gynecologist has now to interfere in the labor of in the process of labor of the patient so the number of contractions when you are here this is the column where you have to write the contractions per 10 minutes per 10 minutes how many contractions are coming this has to be written here that in 10 minutes if there are three contractions then you have to chart it here if there are five then you can plot a line here so this is the way you have to write the contractions then this will be oxytocin the drops per ml how much oxytocin you are given to the patient for the induction of labor or for the augmentation of labor so this you have to chart here then any drugs if you are giving any drugs to the patient then they have to be charted here drugs like uh, what drugs are being used buscopan or uh, um, drotin these can be written here, here along with the IV fluids because the fluid maintenance is very important during the process of labor so IV fluids can be written here if you are giving RL if you are giving NS so all these have to be mentioned in this partograph so that we have an idea that how much intake the patient has taken and how much output the patient is given. Then in this area, you can write the vital condition of the mother. Here the pulse and the BP will be charted. Here the temperature will be charted and here the urine. Urine, if you are checking, for example, if the patient is, uh, a con in, is in condition of preeclampsia or eclampsia or uh, is on magnesium sulfate, then we have to check the status of urine as well. So here you can check the status of urine and write the findings that how much protein is there in the urine, how much acetone, how much is the volume of the urine. The volume of the urine is checked in case of magnesium sulfate. When the, mag the patient is on maxilf, then you have to check the volume of the urine in every 30 minutes that how much volume or how much urine the patient is passing. Then whenever you are plotting the pulse and the BP here, this there it is given that pulse has to be plotted with a dot and the BP has to be plotted with this arrow line. For example, the, patient, the BP of the patient is 140 by 90. So 140 till 90 this is the way you have to plot the bp of the patient the systolic bp you will start from the systolic bp and go till the diastolic bp so mainly this is the way that you can plot the partograph and this is how uh, the partograph looks and this is the way you can plot the partograph then apart from this uh, you should also know that how to interpret a partograph. I've already told you that whenever the alert line is crossed, when your findings cross this alert line and come in this region, then you have to inform to the gynecologist. And when the action line is also crossed, then it means that now is the time for interventions. That now you have to intervene in between along using the drugs or the IV fluids to maintain the condition of the patient, the mother and the fetus, you have to now start with your interventions. Now the key message, uh, in short now if we summarize all these things, uh, you can see the partograph here and the basic things that we have uh, discussed. Along with this, if any important thing is there is, First of all, the when is the partograph started? When do we have to start plotting the partograph? When the cervical dilatation is more than 4 cm and the number of contractions is more than 2 per 10 minutes. So this is the time that you have to start plotting the, chart, uh, the partograph. Then few things that FHR, status of membranes, 
एमनीटिक फ्लूड यूटेराइन कॉन्ट्रैक्शन एंड पल्स दीज आर द थिंग्स दैट हैव टू बी मॉनिटर एवरी हाफ आयरली एंड सर्वाइकल डायलिटेशन बी पी एंड टेम्परेचर दिस हैज टू बी मॉनिटर एवरी फोर आयरली सो इफ यू प्लॉट दिस फाटोग्राफ करेक्टली देन इट कैन बी वेरी यूजफुल टू टैकल एनी काइंड ऑफ इमरजेंसी बिफोर दे आर आई लाइक यू कैन एसेस एवरीथिंग बिफोर हैंड दैट वॉट यू हैव टू डू एंड हाउ यू कैन मैनेज योर पेशेंट वेल सो इफ यू वॉन्ट यू कैन जस्ट हैव अ लुक एट दिस पार्टोग्राफ वंस अगेन दिस इज द एक्चुअल पार्टोग्राफ दैट इज यूज इन दी हॉस्पिटल्स हेयर यू हैव टू राइट द नेम दैट इज द आइडेंटिफिकेशन डेटा नेम ग्रेविडा para hospital number date of admission time of admission and the status of the membranes whether they are ruptured or not and if ruptured then at how many hours then here you can write the fetal heart rate here the liker the molding of the head this you can mention here in these columns now comes the dilatation part that how much is the cervical dilatation you can write down here in these boxes the descent of the head that is it is mainly the station for descent of the head you have to consider it as 0 minus 1 minus 2 plus 1 and plus 2 so you can write the descent of the head here in these columns then here you have to mention the time for example like cervical dilatation we are monitoring every 4 hourly so if we are starting the part of charting at 12 pm so here will be 12 pm here will be 4 pm 8 pm 12 am and so on how much the time the patient is taking for delivery then here you have to write the contractions that are coming per 10 minutes then oxytocin the level the units how much you are giving here you can uh, mention the drugs and the iv fluids that you are using for the patient here the pulse and the bp has to be mentioned here the temperature and then the urine the volume protein acetone and the volume of the urine has to be written down here so i hope this was helpful and you get a slight idea of how you can plot the partograph if uh, any time you have to use it in the labor room or the ward or even if you don't have to use you can also interpret if you see that your gynecologist are plotting the partograph and you have to know that what is the status of the patient then also you can just have a look at the partograph and tell that yes now the patient is about to deliver or the status of the mother and the fetus is okay or not so i hope this was helpful any suggestions are most welcomed thank you